Uh, hello there, Steve here in Sydney of the Lay Gnosis website, truebluehealer.com. I'm going to give you some basic ideas uh, to get your head around what seems to be quite a baffling uh, society of mystery. And um, I'm going to give you a couple of metaphors and things which are going to make things clear to you. It certainly give you a useful handle on a situation which is uh, potentially mildly threatening to you and your loved ones. Okay. Um, I want to bring to your attention the pseudo-skeptic phenomenon of the trolling of people, the head-kicking of people all over the internet, in particular Christians, by a bunch of people who call themselves pseudo-skeptics. Um, you might think they're just juvenile delinquents, um, um, children's uh, angry brains in um, uh, grown men's bodies, that sort of thing. Um, and you might think they're totally random in their foolishness um, and they're, they're no um, sort of threat to you because you're an average person with obviously greater intelligence and you can dispatch them in a couple of comments, block them and delete them, whatever you need to do. Um, and you might think that's all the um, pseudo-skeptic movement needs in, from your personal attention. Um, but you would be wrong if you thought it was that simple. You've really got to ask the question, well, how could Lawrence Krauss ever put himself up for a debate uh, which, uh, which is going to go, it's globally on the internet now, available to the whole English speaking world, but why did he ever risk going on television up against uh, William Lane Craig, who is a superb and very composed debater, and typically a hands-down winner, simply because of his great composure and his ability to to quote things from a wide variety of literary sources and stump atheists. Um, in the last three debates we had between Brisbane, Sydney and uh, Melbourne in Australia, uh, Krauss tried to um, stop the debates being publicised at all off, the, off YouTube, off the ABC television channel who wanted to uh, broadcast it live, you see, a blow-by-blow -blow description of the great debate between someone um, claimed to be a great astrophysicist and a brilliant intellectual mind and William Lane Craig, you see. Uh, but anyway, you've really got to ask, why would such a second-rate person take on William Lane Craig and lose so ignominiously in the Melbourne debate and the Sydney debate where he interrupted, choked off, bit off William Lane Craig some 70 times? Why would you continue doing this? Don't tell me he's... Um, purely doing this for financial reward, I don't believe it. You might wonder why um, Lawrence Krauss, the great astrophysicist, comes up with no new arguments whatsoever. He just keeps uh, paraphrasing Richard Dawkins, the same old mindless atheist uh, put-downs insulting Christians, many of which are self-defeating and easily shot to pieces by superb debaters. Uh, like William Lane Craig, and also average online Christians are obviously more intelligent than most of the sceptics, the devotees who support Lawrence Krauss, etc. So I'll put it to you, what do you think is really going on? Here you are, readily fending off the silly pseudo-sceptics who come out of JREF and Lawrence Krauss's following and uh, Neil deGrasse Tyson's following, and... Um, what do you think they're actually doing? Uh, still valiantly and pathetically trying to, um, in a Don Quixotic way, trying to head kick Christianity into being more rational like they are. Uh -huh. So what do you think they're really doing? You've got to ask this question. I will give you an evidence trail where you can, where you can make up your own mind about how they got here, but I'll tell you now, Richard Dawkins is saying the same lines he did 30-odd years ago. Uh, so is James Randi, so is Lawrence Krauss, whenever he started. Uh, they're all mouthing um, um, lines put into their heads by people like Paul Kurtz, who uh, editors, edits the magazine in the um, Humanist Society in the US and founded the psychological operation, the psychop, that is called CSICOP. It's a joke, it's uh, a game they're playing with you. You may not see what CSICOP 
uh, means when you read it quickly, you just gloss over a stupid acronym. But really, it's a scam pulled on you. Now, what is the scam? Paul Kurtz is also um, a publicist at Prometheus Books. I'm going to give you a, a link on this. It's called Subversive Thinking. It's a blog where someone explores Prometheus Books. And they're all about sexual perversions, about um, cannibalism, necrophilia, pedophilia, um, various animal affiliates and stuff like that. And promoting them and... Um, trying to sell them to the reader to the effect that they're really normal, all these things. And they're just another part of the spectrum of human behavior, you see. That's what's written in the Prometheus website, the number of books and titles there. And uh, Subversive Thinking blog page, I'll leave, leave a link for you down there, uh, is very informative about that. Now that was, that's all been going since 1976, so 30, 40 years later, what are they actually doing? What's the latest stuff they're doing? The Lawrence Krauses of the world, the James Randys of the world? Well, it's kind of been outed in a way they didn't plan for. Um, and here it is for you now. I've got a couple of videos here for you. Um, Barbara Hewson is a top-rating British lawyer. She's defending some people charged with crimes against uh, young uh, underage children, minors, sexual crimes that is, um, and in their defense of these old men she says quite seriously this is the best defense they can put forward, that they're such old guys they deserve a break and what should really happen is if anyone had any sense at all, anyone could have any clarity of vision, if anyone was rational according to Barbara Hewson, the top, grading, top rated lawyer, well we should lower the age of consent to 13 to give the old guys open slather at your children. Okay? That's what she says. Just think about that if you just lower the age of consent to 13, then parents are basically disarmed. They can't legally intervene. Um, if a pedophile propositions a 13-year-old child, because they have the right of choice at age 13. That's what the um, pseudo-skeptic movement is actually has been moving towards since 1976. And it's happening in a court case right now. Links are provided. There's no hope of this ever happening. Um, society's general natural resistance to uh, pedophilia. In fact, most people are, are nonplussed by it. They don't know what to think. Why would you be sexually attracted to a child uh, of 13 years old? Well, that's that'll, that's explained for you in Prometheus books, that sort of thing. There's, a, there's all these filia books, you see, trying to justify them. And I'll give you some links to pedophile conferences, which still go on today, all over the world. And basically what they want to do is, and they do admit this too in their chat lines, they want to smash families to create more loose children to go into orphanages, um, foster care, um, that sort of thing. So there's more children for pedophiles to um, lust after. That's basically what they're doing. Plenty of links underneath this video I will give you. While Barbara Hewson advocates basically uh, giving pedophiles uh, free access to any child over 13, it's not clear at all whether she's donated her own children to the local pedophile ring. I don't know. But that's a question we could put to her. But she's really working on a very wide front for the pseudo-skeptic movement. Not all pseudo-skeptics are about this. Um, but certainly some strategic and... Um, highly located um, elements are. Okay? Now where could you put this strange movement of, of nearly all men um, with this strange predilection toward uh, pedophilia and, uh, and other paraphilias? Uh, horses, corpses, necrophilia. There's all these books available. If you want to read up on sex with dead bodies, go to the Prometheus website. Um, you might be fascinated. Um, but that's the, found, that's the foundational rock of the pseudo-skeptic movement that head kicks Christians every day of the week all over the internet, okay? So what are they doing to you? Well, 
Mr. and Mrs. Average, while you're happily swatting all the skeptics and blocking and deleting them, because it's so easy to steamroller, aren't they? Anyone with average intelligence can steamroller the pseudo skeptics. The trolls, a lot of people call them, you see. Um, and they are the foot soldiers who enlist. Most, most of these people are sort of innocents. They're useful idiots who enlist in the pseudo skeptic movement because they're too feeble to form, feeble minded, to form opinions of their own. So they do actually have to get a James Randi personality prosthesis implant so they can at least seem to function like a normal adult and what that consists of is about um, eight maxims and about 20 keywords with which to beat Christians round the head with and proponents of a telepathy. While you're fighting them you're not noticing what's going on in the UK with pedophile trials. Okay, It's time you turn your attention to the real things that matter that uh, your children are lusted after and they basically want to disarm parents, heterosexual parents, uh, around the uh, modern world, basically. Personally, I don't think they've got much of a chance of ever getting this up. Um, and I'll, I'll tell you some other things about it, but I really don't think they've got much of a chance because most people are filled with um, at least some kind of revulsion toward the whole concept of pedophilia. I don't think anyone's ever going to bring in legislation, put it through Parliament to help a bunch of old men out who are detested by mainstream society. Now, what I can do is give you a kind of metaphor, an analogy, an account, a story of... Uh, what they're actually doing and where they're going and why I don't think it's as great a threat as you might first think but I'm gonna I'll give you a metaphor right now so here it comes all the information of the afterlife gleaned over the last 150 years of channeling indicates that you likely come from a group soul in pre-life and you um, reincarnate here on earth in a body which is kind of like a vehicle and uh, you leave it when you die, you go back to your group soul, you see, with collected experiences which somehow get shared by others. Um, now, you come here to live a life of a certain tone, a certain quality, you see. Now, there's a couple of provisos that enable you to continue reincarnating. There's about two things. You've got to be more than a materialistic, carnalistic animal. Okay? So... By that I mean, by carnal I mean, I include eating and drinking, that sort of thing. If that's all you think you are, just an eating, drinking machine, a screwing machine, that sort of thing, then uh, you're not going to make it. And I'll tell you what's going to happen in a minute. The other thing you have to do is to uh, learn to think about other people more than yourself. It's an exercise in personal development and it's a test for you here in your life in the physical. Okay? So there's two items uh, which are um, necessary for you to continue reincarnating. Now I've got to correct a, a, a misapprehension here. Lots of uh, lovey-dovey uh, New Age people think that everyone's as beautiful as they are and wouldn't hurt a fly. But, and therefore life is eternal and is eternal and perpetual and 100% forgiveness for all transgressions, you see. Well, um, that is not true. And what happens is that reincarnations on Earth have a 50% failure rate. Okay, you don't keep going round and round and round forever. There's a 50% failure rate. If you don't fulfill those two criteria of being more than carnal, you've got to be more than carnal, and you've got to care more about other people um, than yourself. You've got to learn to do that, okay? Okay. Um, if you fail to meet those two criteria, then you start reincarnating back into lower animals. Okay? And you gradually devolve into lower and lower animals and ultimately end up as background radiation of the universe. Okay? Many people have argued, many insightful skeptic observers have said that skeptics seem to have no souls they um, have got major components missing and they always point up this total narcissism, this total self-devotion, this um, uh, self-obsession they have and um, 
their complete lack of empathy, which is what uh, narcissism actually means, and the preoccupation with carnality above everything else, um, and always advocating anything on anything. There should be no rules. Everything should be allowed to screw anything else. Uh, it should all be legal, you see. So that's carnality taken to extremes. Um, you can't go any further than that. So the two criteria that disqualify you from continuing existence on planet Earth, they fulfill it very well if you think about it, if you give it some thought. The skeptic movement, the pseudo-skeptics, fulfill it very well. It's often said that they worship evolution because they really don't want to be here. They think they're here by mistake. And my explanation is that they've already lost significant parts of their soul and this is their last uh, sort of sojourn on Earth. And they'll be reincarnating back into lower life forms, animals, which they seem to have a great affinity for with evolution, if you think about it, um, and animal drives and that sort of thing, um, animal um, emotions and attitudes. Well, they're on their way out of the human race, back into lower, simple animals okay so i hope i've given you some sort of like a way of putting a handle on where they are and what they're doing they're basically exiting they're a failure rate they're part of the 50 percent of people souls who aren't going to make it okay the gay marriage thing by the way um they need children to adopt smashing families is about the only way you can get more children for gay couples to adopt, you see. Now, on, th on that um, thought, uh, the Russian society is steadfastly opposed to gay marriage and, and homosexual rights generally because they fear for the, uh, the adoption of heterosexual children by gay parents. They say it just isn't natural, it isn't right. You need two kinds of parents to produce the right brain development in the average little person. Uh, so Russia is not following the, the path of the Western world. Isn't that an interesting thing? I've got a link for you about this, okay, below this video. Lawrence Krauss, you might call the uber skeptic uh, currently, he's all over the internet with uh, his debacle loss to William Lane Craig. He's tangled up with pedophilia trials in England where he used his, wait for it, his scientific standing, his authority as a scientist to make excuses for a convicted pedophile. He's not really that bad. He's my good friend. He can't be that bad. Uh, I've never actually seen him do anything to an underage minor. Um, therefore, empirically, scientifically, he can't be judged as guilty. He says that. I'll, gi I'll give you the article. It's linked. It's written by Rebecca Watson who wrote an expose article about him. She's a, a skeptic blogger, one of the people called Skeptics. And she's the one that was threatened with... Um, Rebecca Watson, a skeptic, she was threatened with um, murder, uh, death and dismemberment threats. Thousands of them for daring to speak off-topic at some TAM meetings, the Amazing Randy meetings, OK? So, Lawrence Krauss, his astrophysics career, he uses it to try and boost his career um, getting a better deal for pedophiles, basically. Rebecca Watson uh, exposed him for doing this and he even was good enough, cooperative enough to even answer some of the things in the blog article and he's down there named and you can see what he says that uh, he can see no evil, hear no evil around his good friend. It just doesn't exist. But a British court found otherwise and jailed him. Okay? So, can you trust Lawrence Krauss on anything? He claims all his opinions are empirical science, but I don't think they are. I think they're about sexual preference, largely. He's always bringing up homosexual sheep. In every debate with William Lane Craig, it gets almost boring that he keeps bringing up homosexual sheep in every damn debate. Uh, what a strange predilection. There must be a book on that. I don't know. Is it um, Irvinophobia or something? Ir Irvinophilia or something? I don't know what you call that. have to go to Promise's website to find out. 
um, what would it be, Irvine Nephilia or something like that. I don't know how you look that up. I don't know how you find that, but um, I'll leave that to you guys. And the reason I said that uh, he's just mouthing um, Dawkins things, Dawkins himself defends pedophilia, tries to water it down, weaken it, it's not really that bad. And, um, of course, after he said that, we have to remember that he wanted to jail the Pope for crimes against humanity, because the, the Pope's crimes against children are very serious, you see. The Pope should have been jailed. But Dawkins is, is playing sort of like, um, he knows better. Some, some sexual acts with children are okay, according to Dawkins. And there's an article about him apologising for uh, that sort of thing, uh, that really pedophilia isn't that bad molestation isn't as bad as it's cracked up to be and uh, really we and uh, I think he uses the phrase mass hysteria too uh, Dawkins and um, uh, Barbara Hewson use the standard debunking phrase mass hysteria for um, for general society's attitude toward pedophilia which is well mass hysteria is a self debunking phrase if you think about it it's an oxymoron so that's the top rated English lawyer. So desperate as to use silly UFO debunking terms to describe concerned parents' protective attitudes about their own children. Okay, so that's the inverted lot of values that the pedophile movement has, which has closed itself, clothed itself in uh, pseudo skepticism, James Randi, and attacks on religion to distract you from what they're actually doing. Uh, their real target is your children. I think I've said enough now. <laughs> Ta-ta, Steve here in Sydney.